So getting into our LFTs, or our liver function tests. When we look at our LFTs, you have your AST, your ALP, your A, uh, or I'm sorry, AST, ALT, ALP, your albumin, and your bilirubin. Those are the five things that you're going to get when you have a liver function test. So when we start looking at somebody where we pull a liver panel, we want to know how well everything is working, right? So why do I care if their liver is functioning properly? It's important, right? So we kind of have to have like that whole like hepatic side of the house working. Fair. So it also again tells me how well they're going to be able to take some of the medications that we're giving them, how well they're able to biotransform those, how well they're able to metabolize and break them down. And then again, when we have somebody where we're looking at the clotting side of the house, when we have any type of insult to the liver, we start thinking clotting issues as well, regardless of if they're on something like Coumadin or whether we're talking about somebody who just has like cirrhosis of the liver, right? And so that's kind of the, the one thing that we really like to look at on the hospital side of the house. We have a lot of urban dwellers in my area. Yeah, or urban outdoorsmen, yep. So, uh, <laughs> fair. Um, so we, we have a, a large population of them and they tend to imbibe a little bit in their free time, which tends to tank their liver when they are you know, slightly intoxicated, they may fall down and go boom. Now, I, and I will definitely like throw myself under the bus on this. I was the person where, you know, 2 a.m. when you have to go through, it's always two o'clock in the morning, like right when you would just fall asleep. When we have to go pick one of these people up, I would be really frustrated when I was just, you know, running as a paramedic. So I'm like, come on, like this is just bull, like this is dumb, right? Until we realize when you have somebody where they have significant liver impairment, liver is responsible for a whole bunch of filtration inside of the house, as well as your albumin and your clotting factors. So if you start beating down on the liver and you beat down on the availability of those clotting factors, when you fall down and go boom, what are you at risk for? Bleeds. Go ahead and add that into the malnutrition that they probably have, as well as just general intoxication, which is kind of thinning out your blood, if you will, decreasing the ability for it to clot. You can see where you can actually have significant injuries from these patients. And in fact, this is where we see a whole lot of additional head bleeds with them. Okay. And so it's kind of changed my perspective on it, on the whole like, oh, well, fall down, go boom. Well, actually, this could be a significant issue, right? And so we do need to make sure that we are getting these patients the appropriate, uh, appropriate treatment because we can have significant bleeding problems when we have injury to the liver. In general, uh, when we have a breakdown of the liver or we have any type of liver impa uh, impairment, you are going to see your AST, your ALT, and your ALP go up. Those are all going to rise. Your albumin is going to drop. And just depending, you may or may not see changes with that bilirubin, okay? So when I look at my ALT, you don't have to know these numbers. Don't panic. Okay. Yeah, so in the grand scheme of lab values that you need to know up until this point, these ones, good to know and definitely good to recognize when we're transporting these patients, okay? And again, if you have somebody where they have a significant GI bleed, for example, right? Oh, I wonder why we can't get this GI bleed to stop. Well, when we start looking at their liver function test and we're like, oh, hey, this is also tanked. And then we look at their kidney clearance as well. We look at that BUN and creatinine and we're beating down on the kidneys from that GI bleed. Now we can see like, hey, well, maybe we actually need to start looking a little bit more aggressively into like blood product replacement with these patients because we know they already have a decrease in those clotting factors due to the injury to the liver as well as everything else that's going on with them. Okay. So important to definitely look at these. Again, don't 
panic that you have to know these numbers too, especially I see like a lot of the, like the firefighter paramedics in here are like, that's a lot of numbers that I have to know. I get it, it, it is a lot, but these ones, um, and again, they do tend to differ depending on what lab they're using. So whether it's uh, run by like Abbott Labs, LabCorp, that type of thing, they may have different values for them. So always double check the values, the normal ranges with them, and then kind of look at where your patient's at. So again, high levels for these, that's where we're seeing injury. So your uh, ALT typically seven to 55. When we're looking at our AST, eight to 48. So very similar ranges with that. Again, as we start to see those liver enzymes rise, typically up into like the hundreds or so, then we're saying, mm, you might have some issues going on. So whether we're looking at early stages of cirrhosis of the liver, could be a potential for like fatty liver disease, could be potential for tumors uh, on the liver as well. It just kind of helps us to investigate a little bit more when we're looking at these. ALP, um, again, 45 to 115. As we see that rise, that's where we're starting to look for injury uh, with the liver. Albumin, as we said earlier, 3.5 to 5. We start thinking about uh, our, that's our main protein, so we're looking at oncotic pressure as well as that clotting cascade as well. Billy Rubin. Where do we always hear about bilirubin? What's that the main one? Babies. All right, so talk to me a little bit more about it. What happens when we have high levels of bilirubin? They get jaundiced, right? So they have that whole like yellow sclera, yellow, like nice bronzy coat to their skin. Um, so we're starting to look at, as we break down the red blood cells, if we're not able to clear that appropriately, that's where we start to see an increase in their bilirubin levels, okay? So not a, a good functioning liver with that. So that's typically one that we can kind of spot from a mile away where you're like, you look a little off, you look a little yellow, right? Uh, and so we start thinking, hey, if they have problems with their bilirubin levels, let me really look at how well that liver is, um, you know, functioning before we start throwing meds that are going to deprocess the liver with that.